So this year, the prize money was $300,000. Next year, it's going to be 500 freaking thousand dollars. Arnold Classic Finals letting out, and once again, history is made. Hadi Chupan becomes the first Iranian bodybuilder to hoist the Arnold Classic title and shake Arnold Schwarzenegger's hand actually twice on stage. <laughs> In the bigger picture of things, three months after relinquishing his Olympia title, Hadi Chupan wins another monumental title. And for this wrap-up, of course, we have Dave Palumbo, but we figured since this was won by the Persian wolf, we had to find a wolf to help us break this all down. So we found the legend himself, big Dennis Big Bad Wolf. <laughs> Dennis, how did you see this uh, last night prejudging heading into tonight, into the night show? Well, I uh, predicted Samson to win the show, but uh, after seeing the prejudging, I was so impressed and, uh, well, I think Hardy was untouchable condition-wise and, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm glad. It uh, you know ended up you know uh, this way. So uh, I'm a big fan of Sam's, but also love Hardy, and uh, I think condition-wise and um, anything else, he was just untouchable yesterday and today. Dave, I want to go back to last night because when he, uh, Hadi first took the stage, your first remarks were about his conditioning, but not just conditioning, the stark contrast in conditioning. Uh, this show, as opposed to three months ago at the Olympia, what did you see tonight in the finals? He was better tonight than he was yesterday, which is, which is even more impressive because, and I asked Hani Rombaud backstage as coach, he said, would this look have won the Olympia? And don't forget, he works with Derek, Derek Lunsford, Lunsford, who won right. the Olympia, yeah. and he said yes. Yeah. So he said, but you know, Derek's going to come back better. But, so, and I, I think that sums it up. There's no way anyone was beating Hani today. I think if Samson would have brought his best, it would have been a better show. Would he have beat him? I don't know. But we haven't seen Samson at his best yet. I think, and I'm, like Dennis does, I, I, we see the potential there. Right. And we think that if he can bring what he's supposed to bring to the table, that he will win these big shows. He will beat Hottie Chopin. But he hasn't done it yet. So until, until he does it, you know, I'm, going, I'm putting my money on this guy because he's ultra shredded. And I got to tell you, you know, when, he made his, when Arnold was interviewing him at the end, and I thought it would be difficult to communicate like emotion because right. you know, he's, there's a translator. Yeah. I think we were all tearing up a little bit because this guy's been looking up to Arnold his whole life from when he's a young kid, and now he's you know realized that, that, that he won a title and he got to get interviewed by Arnold Schwarzenegger. I mean, I don't know of any thing that could be better than that, aside maybe the 300000 which, by the way, is going up to 500000 next year, incredible. which is incredible. Yeah. But to go back to what Dave was talking about, those remarks, uh, when, Hadi, when uh, Arnold first came out, the first words out of Hadi's mouth was that growing up in Iran, he used to spend his money in his childhood to buy Arnold's videos. So obviously, and we do get that a lot, you know, from the international winners I'm talking about, you know, the idolizing Arnold growing up. But Dennis, I want to go back to the Olympian, obviously the big story that he relinquished his Olympia title. And here we are three months later. And we talk about obviously all 300,000 reasons for him to compete at the show, which again, we converted to the Iranian currency is about 12 million something. All right. Obviously a lot of monetary reward for competing. But I think in the bigger picture, um, he seemed to be on a mission. And last night you saw it, there was a bit of a scowl on his face and really seemed to double down on that signature level of conditioning that we've been accustomed to mm -hmm. out of Hadi Chupan. I think he took it serious, the loss uh, last year at the Olympia, and uh, he just brought it. Uh, I heard he was training like twice a day and uh, doing uh, a lot of cardio. Uh, and his training session was around three hours each. So, and, well, I'm, I mean, this guy is just so incredible and... Uh, I think anything he puts in his mind, he is, you know, he is uh, executing it and bring it. So we saw it yesterday and today. Uh, it's just unbelievable how great the condition is. Um, I mean, his stomach control, everything is just on point. And uh, uh, I have a similar uh, story, uh, you know, being a fan of Arnold. Yeah. Uh, I've been watching his movies back in Russia. So when I was like eight, nine years old, 
and uh, yeah, it's just incredible. Incredible, and uh, the interview was also you very. Classic, so yeah, to be of interviewed course. by him, which was I know a big, big thing for you because I saw how teared up you got when he interviewed yeah. you. Yeah, and uh, actually, I messed up the interview with Arnold <laughs> for sure. I was so nervous, and uh, well, it's my my dream come true because I was the biggest fan uh, of Arnold, and uh, it was never my uh, goal to win the Olympia. I don't know why, but it was in my mind, and I always wanted to win the Arnold. And uh, my first honor was in 2011. I played second to Branch, 12th again, the same. And I, um, you know, took off in 2013, uh, traveled a little bit, and uh, placed third in the Olympia, and then came back uh, half a year later and won the show finally. And uh, that was just hey, so insane. I just, uh, you know, getting all the goosebumps again. Uh, impressive, and I understand the feeling and uh, the the emotion and everything like that. So, uh, really, really great to see Hardy winning the show. He well deserved it. You know, there was an emotional, obviously, about meeting Arnold, but there was another very cool moment afterwards. Uh, his coach, Hani Rambod, you know, came onto the stage, and Hadi not only hugged him, but took his medal off put and him. put it onto Hani Rambod. But, you know, in that moment, I think what I captured, and I wanted to get both of your thoughts on it, um, this show beyond, obviously, Arnold's show. This seemed to mean a lot because, again, relinquishing the title three months ago, it just seemed as if there was uh, a mission. It's a redemption. It's a redemption, right. Yeah. But, and and think I think you saw the, that release. Think about that, that t terrible taste in your yeah. mouth after losing your Olympia title. Right. I mean, how do you even go to bed at night? It's like he probably couldn't wait to do this It show. seemed that exactly. Remember, about a week after you made a reaction video on something that he said in his IG stories about, again, some, one of my friends translated it from Farsi, talking about how the fire is burning, that they are going to come back, and they are going to win next year, and that next year, I guess, the abridged version of it came three months later. Mm -hmm. You saw that emotional release. It just seemed as if there was redemption, vindication, winning the Eternal Classic title. Yeah, I mean, he, he needed this. This is going to give him a lot of momentum now going into the Olympia because now he's, he's the champ, he got that bad taste out of his mouth, and he's like ready to go. And that's what he needed. And you know what? He now knows what the look he needs to yes. bring to the stage to win the Olympia. Yes. If he goes bigger, it doesn't work. Right. If he goes too small, he's going to be too small. This is the look he needs to bring. He, he's got it now. All he's got to do is duplicate this, and he obviously can. And you know what? I hate to say this, and I'm not saying this is a dig against Samson, but maybe Samson should go and train with Hottie because, because – if, if you can't get in shape training with this guy three hours a day, like Dennis said, you know, and get all that nice body control, I mean, then, then obviously you're not working. They'll kick you out of, you know, Iran if, you know, if you don't, if you can't keep up. But I think that's what Samson needs. Samson needs someone like, like a hottie with that militant, like, I am not losing. I am not going to bring anything but my best to the stage. That's what he needs. And when he does that, he might win Mr. Olympia. Rocky went to Russia. Right. Dave wants to send Samson <laughs> Dowda to Iran. Got to get that eye of the <laughs> Exactly. But, um, Dennis, let's put this into perspective as far as, you know, going around today, talking to as many people as I did, there was a prevailing sense that Hadi was in the clear lead for tonight. But then the conversation, the broader conversation, seemed to be that really, if you take a look back, since 2019, 2020, his appearances at the Olympia, you could very well make the argument that he could be coming into this as a three-time Olympian, depending on a couple of things going yeah. the other way, right? And obviously this, in theory, would be that fourth monumental title. Championship Olympia, championship aspirations. What does this do in terms of Hadi finding that formula and revisiting that next September? Um, I think, first of all, uh, as former Mr. Olympia, losing the title and make the decision to compete in the Arnold, it's very dangerous uh, choice, you know. Uh, it could be, you know, go different way, right? right? So if he will lose today, now that will comes in next year that will put him way back for the uh, for the this this year's was, Olympia. I'm, I'm going to disagree with you. I don't think it was a risky, but you know why? No, no. I mean, if, if no, no. The happen. only re no, I know. It, but the reason why it wasn't risky for Hadi because he's a Dexter Jackson. He's a guy who never shows up out of shape. But so you have to think but, like uh, an athlete. Yeah. Right. I mean, if, if what? Samson would have delivered the goods and beat him here, yeah. then it, he would have deserved it. You know what I mean? Of course, of course. So, but yeah. going, uh, you know, making this decision yeah. to compete at the Arnold like yeah. uh, four months later, right, yeah. after losing the title. Sure. So you have to think like an athlete. Right. So, I mean, it's, it's not a, He's a warrior. very, yeah, yeah, I know, but it's, it's not a hundred percent chance to win, right? right? So, but 
as an athlete, you're yeah. always worried about, you know. So what's the next step? Right. Uh, what what does um, uh, make people, it for you, right? Don't you think the people that take the safe route always fail? Yes. No, yeah. I'll, he I'll rolled no, the no, dice no. and he this said, is, you know what? Another, I believe in myself. Side. Your, your point. Right. Hundred percent. No, no. Your point is well taken, and I'm with you on that. <laughs> I brought this up a couple of weeks ago that, you know, again, there is a bit of a gamble here because if he loses, yeah, is, yeah. he loses, he's not coming in as the installed number two exactly, favorite. Exactly. He's now coming in yes. as the third guy. But now, but now right, championship back, aspirations back, back on track. Yes, absolutely. He believed in himself, and I think that's what's, what's so good. I think that's why he's so difficult to beat because he knows that he's got the ability and he ain't showing up out of shape, you know, to use a, a slang term here. Uh, and that's really the, the name of the game. It was a two-man show, but at the end of the day, you know, I thought some of the other guys in third Third, fourth, fifth, we're actually in better condition. I did want to talk a little bit more about Samson because, again, we are talking about, you know, not even 12 months ago. I mean, it was uh, a different time frame. Again, winning the Arnold Classic. And we, again, when you when somebody wins the Arnold Classic, we then fast forward, you know, portray what their Olympia uh, aspiration, what their Olympia prospects will be. Because, again, if you think about what Samson did in a matter of 11 weeks, going top six at the Olympia and then flipping the script, defeating Nick Walker and winning the Arnold Classic and then obviously installed as one of the top favorites to come in. I, I do want to paint a positive picture to this, again, because for anyone that's going to consider this a quote-unquote setback, he lost to a guy that many think could very well be a three-time Mr. Olympia oh, champion coming in. No, 100%, 100%, right. But again, for Samson, Dave, I'll go to you first. Um, if there was one thing you had to go back to the drawing board, work on, uh, fast forward to next Olympia, what would it be? Conditioning. I mean, you got to suffer. I mean, that's all there is to it. And I, I think, look, I, I'm not his coach, but I think that he's very carb sensitive. And I think that when you put too many carbs into this guy, it, it, it ruins his physique. You know, I've seen guys that can literally eat one cup of rice, and, and they look like they, they ate 1,000 grams of carbs. Dennis would have to eat 2,000 grams of carbs in his prime to get the same look that these guys get from one cup of rice. That's just their genetics. And I think that they're not playing to, to Samson's strengths. They're, they're trying to make him something that he's not. And I think that's a problem. And I think that you ha they're going to have to go back to the drawing board and figure this out because otherwise he's never going to realize his true potential. Look, he's, he's second here. That's great. He's an amazing athlete. He's a great bodybuilder. You're not, we can't take that away from him. But if he's going to take that next step to beat the best of the best, he's, he's going to have to figure out how to do it. Dennis, what would you like to see out of Samson fast forward nine months? I've been talking about that, you know, his condition for two years probably. And, you know, I'm a conditioned guy and I love to see guys in a crazy condition. And that's the only issue. I think Samson has, from all the pros today, the biggest, uh, they call it, uh, potential, you know, to be not just Mr. Olympia, but... Uh, being Mr. Olympia many, many times in a row, but he needs to figure out how to get in crazy condition and shape. So that's the only issue. Anything else? He's, he's got it. He's got it. I mean, it's like close to flex wheeler physique, but a little bit heavier, you know, more dense, but that's the only thing what still uh, missing uh, on that physique. That's the only thing. I did want to get a thought from both of you regarding three, four, five, and six. Um, Rafael Brandeo, after taking a year off, last competing at the 2022 Olympia, uh, finishing in third place. What did you think of what you saw in prejudging in tonight? Better tonight. Better tonight. Fuller, um, more polished, leaner. I think. I thought I actually had John De La Rosa winning after prejudging, even though I know he wasn't in that third position. But I think that Brandeo, to me, convinced me that he was the third place guy here. What, what did you make, uh, again, uh, we considered that Rafael Brandao put on about 14 pounds wow. in that off year uh, coming into this Arnold Classic? He looked really, really, really impressive, and uh, he was solid third, for sure. And in some uh, back pauses, he, he beat uh, Samson. I was going to say, really? <laughs> you could make a case for him being second place yeah, here, because yeah. he was in much better condition than Absolutely. Samson. Samson just has that big, billowy you know, frame. But he still looks a little bit smooth next to these guys. Yes. I don't know, but I mean, um, the con condition is, is everything, you know, so, and if you have that crazy lines, man, why, why are you not bringing it? You know, that's a, that's a question. I think you just need to, to put some mind into it, maybe 
uh, talk to his trainer Milos and uh, figure it out. You know, I, I mean, we had that conversation with Milos uh, uh, at the podcast like uh, a year ago or and a half a year years ago. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, but like I said, uh, conditions, everything. Uh, and if you are a great athlete, have you have great lines, probably one of the best ever, right? So, but not bringing the condition. You know, you're, you're, you're not going to win the shows, you know, like this. John De La Rosa, of course, uh, we talked about, you know, everything that he's gone through, right? Yeah, I mean, it's one of the most complete John De La Rosa versions we've ever seen in that, you know, really after uh, overcoming a lot of adversity. I know, Dave, you were on him for a couple of weeks now saying that he's going to be in your top five, and it certainly paid that off. He saw him in the lobby, like, after preaching, and he's like, because you called it. I said, John, you made me look like a genius, I said, because <laughs> for once I called it, and, and, and you actually delivered the goods and, and made it look a, I said, look, I know you have a great physique. He yeah. just he wasn't able to nail his conditioning. Right. He was a guy like that. It was always almost there. And he pulled it off. I mean, he was the best he's ever been. And you know, I, he could have flip flopped third, fourth in my mind. But um, I thought it was I thought it was a good performance from him. Dennis, what impressed you most about John De La Rosa? Uh, I think there were. He was the best John ever. Yeah. Um, I liked him uh, when he was the US, uh, he won the USA's in Vegas. I don't know how many years ago he was. So yeah. yeah, he was yeah. so impressive, and that remind me today on that show. He was so impressive, best double bicep. Pose and uh, he was just very incredible, tight. very tight. Uh, like I said, I never seen him so good. And you know, that, yeah, yeah. I, I wanted to, not about John, but I wanted to say that Akeem Williams no, was yeah. so yeah. good tonight. Tonight, yeah. Oh my God, he was like a different person. And had he looked like this at prejudging, right? He might have been third place. For who knows? This guy was enormous, but he was ripped and hard and full. He nailed it perfectly. He, he was the first one who came out for the individual yeah. presentations, yeah. and you were right all like, yeah. oh my god. Louis, like, you know what the thing was, though? His, his pre-judging score was probably so yeah. low that it couldn't bring him up beyond sixth place, because it was just a mathematical thing, you know? Yeah, Akeem Williams was one of those, I, I, I guess, maddening cases where, again, you see all the tools, all the potentials, and at times he's been able to put it together at 2020 in Olympia. Mm -hmm. um, deliver certainly here tonight in yeah. finals. I think Akeem has all the tools to be the champion, Mr. Olympia, but somehow it, it doesn't work out for him. I don't know what he's doing. He's but kind of a little like you because he, if he doesn't get the right combination yeah. of fullness and conditioning, perfect, then he, he doesn't look good. Right. So in the beginning of my career, when I was young, so I need to carb load, like yeah. you know that the stories of 5,000 carbs, uh, grams of carbs. But towards the end of my career, like 2013, 14, 15, and so far. I start depleting me going into the contest, so I, I never carb loaded. So 2013, when I finished third, I was I was empty. So I was depleted, and I was competing. But I looked like I was you eating like yeah. 10,000 grams of carbs. So I think uh, with the age, the body is changing, and you yeah. need to be really patient. You know, you need to watch everything what's happening, how's uh, the body reacting to what you do. Uh, and I think, um, you know, I mean, he's what, uh, 35, 30, 38, whatever? Yeah, he's, I probably, I think he's yeah, it's like, yeah, yeah. So yeah. maybe it's time to think everything over and uh, maybe just um, do the last week a little bit different, you know? But you need to try it, you know, not just uh, going uh, into the uh, prep and then, oh, okay, last week I'm gonna try that. No, you need to try it during the prep. Right. I, I did want to bring up one more individual um, who you mentioned had better color tonight, yes. and that is Antoine Vaillant. Um, you know, much, Shocking much. He didn't make the top six. Yeah, uh, but again, you, you look at his on-stage presentation, and obviously, like he is a bit of a showman. Um, I had him as best you, poser. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> I agree. No I way agree. he doesn't win best poser. He got ripped off. Samson's got a great routine, but Antoine that is was, the Kai Green yeah. of posing. That was a great routine. It was Lord of the Rings into the Arnold yes. uh, pumping iron music. Come on, give uh, the guy. Uh, aside, aside from the Sergio Oliva Jr. level, you have yeah. to say in the last seven, eight years, that was probably the best routine. I don't know what you made of Antoine oh, prejudging tonight, and then of course the routine. I would absolutely, Antoine is a great performer, and you brought it yesterday and tonight. So he's. He's more kind of classic and bodybuilding uh, mixed up. So he represents bodybuilding at the best. You know, it's like all the uh, classic poses. Uh, his performance was great. His posing routine was yeah. in, in, incredible. So I don't know why, but uh, yeah, he should be uh, the best poser award winner tonight. Uh, another very cool moment. Uh, 
Jay Cutler, four-time Mr. Olympia Jay Cutler, received the Arnold Classic Lifetime Achievement Award and, you know, had so many shout-outs. Uh, yeah, great speech, you know, uh, gave credit, obviously, to Chris Aceto, who, by the way, we've missed uh, all weekend long. Uh, we send our thoughts and prayers to Chris, his family. Uh, Chris, for those not aware, uh, lost his mother earlier in the week, so we are certainly praying for him and keeping him and his family in our thoughts. But uh, Jay Cutler receiving the Lifetime Achievement Award. I had a chance to speak to him about it yesterday on stage, talking about really what it meant for him. And, you know, this three years after Ronnie Coleman received the, right. the Lifetime Achievement Award, and you saw both of them just, you know, getting emotional and everything and just what it meant to them. But at the end, at the end, he recreated the famous quad stop. <laughs> oh, you, be, you can do it. Here we go. No. Don't break your leg, man. <laughs> yeah, no, believe me, I don't need any more injuries. No more surgeries. <laughs> but then, but then, the biggest news, aside from obviously Hottie winning the show, was at the very end, and I mean leaving this show on an absolute exclamation mark, mic drop, Arnold Schwarzenegger pretty much has everything, the confetti's falling from the sky, and he goes, okay, by the way, guys, so this year, the prize of money was $300,000. Next year, it's going to be Five hundred freaking thousand dollars, half, half a million. I, yeah, I was about to figure it out. Yeah, that. I was about to do the math. Half a million. So I have to imagine in the Iranian currency, that's got <laughs> to like be billion. like twenty like a million, no, that's like a billion gazillion yeah, that's a dollars. But no, in all seriousness, obviously. <laughs> will the Olympia raise the price? Right yeah, now? A, 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 it, yes, let's just be very real. Yeah, Shots fired. <laughs> Dennis Wolf, what did you make of this, I guess, shock announcement? You know, in the heat of the moment, all the camera phones out, and Arnold grabs the mic. They should raise it in uh, 2014, 10 yeah. years ago. <laughs> I just got home, 130,000. Yeah, right. right? So I'm telling you, we're going to see a million dollars within the next five years because if Arnold and the Olympia keep going back and forth, they get, someone's going to have to put the first million up, you know. So Might be Bader. Bader. Maybe that? our friend Bader. Moving close to that uh, NFL, NHL you're not even level. Close. We're not even no, 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 there. but it's it's getting there, right? So, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's all peanuts yeah. compared to that. But I mean, if you're getting there, like uh, half a million, million, uh, hey, yeah. and, and 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 people say bodybuilding is not no. not alive. Well, you are going to have some so. stiff, <laughs> stiff competition I, here I next year. I'd like first of all, I want to also thank Iron Mag, Iron Mag Labs, yeah. and Rob DiMaggio for sponsoring oral coverage here this whole weekend long. Without them, we couldn't have had this great coverage. Thank you, Rob, and check out IronMagLabs.com. And you know, I also want to thank the Arnold people because they rolled yeah. out the red carpet Absolutely. for us. And they they gave us the press credentials, and they really were you know very helpful and gave us great seats. And uh, I want to just thank them for that as well. Oh, Bill Ross, you, we put up our interview we did at your booth today. So if people want to check it out, yeah, check out, uh, absolutely. It's on, yeah, it's on the, it's, on the YouTube, it's on the YouTube right channel right but now. You know, the one with David and Lee staring at <laughs> you. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> But, you know, I've I bodybuilding since I was a teenager, and uh, I love the sport. And to just kind of be, like, from the outside looking in and now be here. And, and this allowed me that opportunity and visit with you guys. It's just a dream for me, you know, and coming true. And uh, I just appreciate it and uh, maybe give a little insight and, and, like I say, highlight, you know, Dennis and Branch and that era of bodybuilding and keep it alive, man, because it's an important part of the story. Thanks, man. Thanks, yeah. Man. And I want to also congratulate Lorelai Chapatos for winning bikini. And, of course, uh, we would be remiss if we didn't also congratulate Diogo Montenegro. And also also, Hadi, uh, Hadi Chopin won the best, uh, most muscular most award, muscular the Franco award. Colombo yeah. Most Muscular Award. Yeah. So, great show. Thanks for listening all weekend long. I want to thank King Kamali and the whole crew who was doing the live streams on Tyler. Friday and Saturday night. Tyler, um, and, Armand, Amin. Yeah. And, uh, and who was, was Romano on there too? And Romano, and Romano right. Romano's so. hosting for a little bit. Yeah, yeah. So, they, they did a great job holding it down at home. Uh, I think the coverage is great. And tomorrow we're going to do some more stuff at the yes, Expo. We're going, so. to, we're going to call more people out. <laughs> we are going to do more things that are inevitably going to get kicked out, not only yeah. of the Arnold Classic, not only the state of Ohio, but probably the United States of America. We'll go, to, we'll go back to, uh, to Iran with uh, Hadi. And train. Yeah, and train. And learn the art of conditioning. Three-hour cardio. Comeback, right? Everyone wants to see a comeback. There so. you go. There you go. I'm going back to Iran. I'll Big bring, shout out. I'll bring uh, Samson with me. <laughs> hey, we're up to, you know, 500 grand next year. Dennis That's is going right. to make a comeback. Dennis might make a comeback for the 500 grand. Right 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 you guys. Right. Right. some thoughts on it. <laughs> Big shout out to our cameraman, Jeff Robinson, Suzu Blaylock, of course, our lit lighting department. I'm going to Dave. Yes. I mean, you know, we'll we have a real, real like, uh, crew you know, today. Sweet. full robust team over here. <laughs> Again, we have that up, kind man. of budget. <laughs> If you haven't already done so, subscribe below, hit the notification bell. If you like what you're watching, I mean, how the heck are you not liking this? We got freaking Dennis Wolf over here. Right. Hit the like button, comment below, and as always, we appreciate all of your support. For Dave Palumbo, Dennis Wolf, what's your name again? I'm sorry. Jack Barnard. 
Zach Barnard. I'm Sadiq Faruqi. Thank you for watching rxmuscle.com. <laughs>